Warning, Bitcoin has just entered quicksand on the legendary Gaussian channel. We've only done this five times in history. All five of them have ended in an extreme bloodbath of at least one year. Take a look. Bitcoin has just entered the quicksand. The previous time we entered quicksand was here, 2023, where we had 460 days of an absolute bloodbath. Time before that, 2019, entered quicksand here, 250 days to recover. Prior time, 2019, entered quicksand here, 400 days of absolute bloodbath. Prior to that, 2015, entered quicksand here, 570 days to recover and finally get out of quicksand. Time before that was the first time in history, 2012, entered quicksand right here, and it took almost 300 days to finally break out of the quicksand. Is Bitcoin in an absolute bloodbath trouble right now? And are we going to be sucked down into quicksand for at least one year recovery? And if so, is there anything that could potentially change the course of Bitcoin's future and possibly save the day? Let's get into it. By the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to give a big announcement. Tons of people have been asking, to cover the weekly stochastic or SI cross and the bull flag that we're in, how to trade it to maximize your money. I took both of those, put them into an exclusive bonus video, completely free to everyone on our email list. If you're on my email list, that video is waiting for you right now. If you're not on my email list, you're completely missing out. Go to CryptoCruitUniversity.com and in three seconds, sign up to the email list and immediately unlock this exclusive bonus video. You do not want to miss this. Go now. Hi, I'm Steve. I quit my job over 13 years ago, been traveling the world since, thanks to my trading and investing skills. Join me for sponsorship-free TA with genuine value that actually works. Subscribe. Here we are on the Bitcoin US dollar index and we are on the legendary five day chart for our quicksand. Now, for those of you who are not aware, we absolutely love the Gaussian channel here on this channel. Now, how to pull it up is you can go to your indicators, you can type in Gaussian channel, and as soon as you do, pop up the styles like this in the input like this and you will be well on your way. Now, Gaussian channel is comprised of two simple colors. Green is pretty good and red is pretty bad. Now, what happens is we shift momentum from green to red and then things really fall apart. So the bigger question is, is Bitcoin about to switch to red? More on that in a moment. But when we look at the Gaussian channel, it has three components. It has a top line, a middle line and a bottom line. The top line acts as resistance once you get sucked into the quicksand. The middle line will act as support and resistance, same with the bottom line. Now, one of your questions may be, well, what about this area here where we potentially got sucked into quicksand? Now, there is a huge myth about this that we're going to unlock a little bit later. But first, we've got to get to these powerful details that are right blatantly in front of our face. When you look at it, Bitcoin has just entered the quicksand. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. What you don't want to see is this little wick coming up, holding it as support here. That does not count as quicksand. What quicksand technically is, is you have a body closing inside of the Gaussian channel. Now, we've only done this, to be frank, five times in history, and all of them have resulted. If you get your little calculator ready and you plug in this number, this number, this number, this number, and this number, and divide by five, you're going to realize that the average time we spend inside of quicksand is at least one year. Once you get into quicksand, it's pretty hard to get out of quicksand. And that is how the Gaussian channel is used during a bull market to understand when we switch to a bearish type of market. Now, keep in mind, some of these happen after the market cycle top, like here entering quicksand after the market cycle top inside of quicksand. Same with 2015. It was after the market cycle top entering quicksand. Same with 2019, the first one, entering quicksand 
after the market cycle top. The only time in history that we can look at and say definitively it was not after a market cycle top was the second time in 2019. And it was here when we had that run from 3K up to 14K, which was not sustainable. We did not respect market structure and we had to course correct. Also, at the time, the market hadn't double bottomed, something that we do every market bottom. So we had our first bottom here and we had to have a technical double bottom. So that's what drew Bitcoin back down. And that was the shortest time that we were there, just 250 days of an absolute bloodbath. That's it, right? So you have on your side the case of, hey, is the top in? Could this be the top? What is happening? Or could it be a situation like we had back here? Now, let's address your question of, hey, how about this one here? Was that quicksand? What's going on? Well, our rule for quicksand is pretty simple. And you go back to any of the runs Bitcoin has had. What you need to happen is a bullish move for Bitcoin, substantially far above the Gaussian channel. And then you need to have a bloodbath move into the Gaussian channel. And that is our rules. It needs to be a bullish move well above this green channel for an extended period of time and an absolute bloodbath move into the Gaussian channel. And that's our warning sign that it's not just any correction. It's a long-term recovery from quicksand. Those are our rules. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. Let's take those rules, apply them to the next rally. Now, the next rally, is Bitcoin in a parabolic move well above the Gaussian channel for an extended period of time? Yes, to all of those. Did we have a bloodbath of a move into quicksand? Yes. That was precisely our point in time when we knew it was not a typical correction and then we're gonna suddenly move back up. It was a bloodbath of at least one year recovery. Take the next cycle. Are we having a parabolic move well above the Gaussian channel for an extended period of time? Yes to all of those. Did we have a bloodbath of a move inside the Gaussian channel? Yes, that was our warning sign way back here that we had one year of turmoil to come. At the times that these happen, nobody wants to believe that we have a year of turmoil to come. They didn't believe us when we covered it back here. They didn't believe us when we covered it back here. And they certainly didn't believe us when we covered it back here. We covered each of these three sitting right here in this chair, talking to the camera and talking to you in saying, this is the Gaussian channel quicksand. This is nothing to mess with. There are literally zero false signals. Tons of people have been asking to cover the weekly stochastic or SI cross and the bull flag that we're in, how to trade it to maximize your money. I took both of those, put them into an exclusive bonus video, completely free to everyone on our email list. If you're on my email list, that video is waiting for you right now. If you're not on my email list, you're completely missing out. Go to CryptoCruitUniversity.com and in three seconds, sign up to the email list and immediately unlock this exclusive bonus video. You do not want to miss this. Go now. There has never been a false signal, including these ones. Like take, take our rules, right? It needs to be an extended period of time, well above the Gaussian channel and a bloodbath of a move into the Gaussian channel. Now, let's look at our recent move here. Did we have an extended period of time well above the Gaussian channel? Uh, we didn't have any of that. None of those are true for this instance here. In fact, we didn't really get above the Gaussian channel at all. It definitely wasn't prolonged, and we definitely didn't have any sort of bloodbath of a move to enter. Now, let's look at our rules here. Did we have an extended period of time well above the Gaussian channel? And did we have a bloodbath of a move into the Gaussian channel? Yes, I would say that one alternative is true. We have formed a bull flag heading into the Gaussian channel. It wasn't a bloodbath of a move like it was here, where it just went absolutely dropped like a hammer into the Gaussian channel. Or here, or here, or here. These moves were rather quick. However, there were two instances in history where we had a bull flag leading into the Gaussian channel. One of them was here, 
One of them was here. Different results for each, but there is a huge clue as to what happened. Let's take a closer look. This is what we have currently. This is a bull flag. Bull flag consists of a top channel here that acts as resistance and it has multiple touch points while making a high, a lower high, and a lower high with consecutive touch points. While the bottom line acts as support while it makes a low, a lower low, a lower low, and a lower low. You want these two lines to be parallel. You want multiple touch points on the top, multiple touch points at the bottom. If all of those are true, it needs to come after a parabolic move or the pull. If you look at it, why do they call it a flagpole? Well, it's because that the pole is generally the huge explosion in price that happens before consolidating in this exact pattern. What this means, in other words, is the market had a parabolic move it started consolidating in this exact formation, which signals to traders that, hey, this is a bull flag. In other words, it's a continuation pattern. In other words, a continuation of what happened prior, right? So these are all the facts of the bull flag. Now, let's pair this with what happened prior. I mentioned there were two bull flags. They both had different outcomes. There could be some clues to tell us how this could play out. Let's take a look. When you scroll back, we've got to go back all the way to the early days of 2013 and early 2014, right? What you can see is that this was a bull flag as well. We had a parabolic move or pull. We had a resistance point here. We had a support zone here. However, we didn't have multiple touch points at the bottom, so it was a bit sloppy, albeit not a textbook bull flag, but it did have attributes of a bull flag. One thing we can note is that price never entered the Gaussian channel during said bull flag. However, a year later, we had a pull, again, a parabolic move to the upside. We did move in this pattern. There were not three touch points at the bottom. We could technically say there were three we can say that this is a bull flag, not a textbook bull flag. We had multiple touch points at the top. We did not have three at the bottom. If you want to count this one, two, and three, then we did. It, it's up for debate, but again, it is a bull flag. It has far more attributes of a bull flag than this. And what is key about this one, in my opinion, is that the bull flag went deep into the Gaussian channel up to the median line here, then had a breakout, but it only broke out to the top of the channel, which acted as, as resistance, and then plummeted price. And as soon as we switched to red, it was done for, right? So that one took, again, 570 days to, to recover. What you can see happening now is that we need, if you're a bear, we need to have multiple candles really hold resistance at the top of this channel, which present day would be roughly about 60K. If you're a Bitcoin bull, what you want to do is avoid what I just said, and you want prices to try to hold this 60K as support, getting out of the Gaussian channel as quickly as possible. And one thing that could really save the day is the weekly stochastic RSI cross something that I just made an exclusive bonus video completely free to our email list. You can go unlock that immediately. Even if you're not on the email list, you can unlock it immediately at CryptoCrewUniversity.com. But what we can see here is that this is nothing to play with. This is a textbook move from Bitcoin well above the Gaussian channel and a move into the Gaussian channel or quicksand. And those don't end well. If we're just looking at the facts and a non-biased approach, whether you want Bitcoin to go up or you want Bitcoin to go down, you want it to go sideways or backwards, it's irrelevant. But when you look at the facts, you can unequivocally say that every time Bitcoin has entered quicksand, it has stayed in quicksand for an average of one year. Those facts are not up for debate. That's not up for debate. What Bitcoin has just done is very rare. It's only happened five times, and none of them have ended well. These are just bona fide facts. Tons of people have been asking to cover the weekly stochastic RSI cross. 
and the bull flag that we're in, how to trade it to maximize your money. I took both of those, put them into an exclusive bonus video, completely free to everyone on our email list. If you're on my email list, that video is waiting for you right now. If you're not on my email list, you're completely missing out. Go to CryptoCruitUniversity.com and in three seconds, sign up to the email list and immediately unlock this exclusive bonus video. You do not want to miss this. Go now. When things really become official is when you have actual candles closing as resistance, something that we haven't done yet. We had this candle pop in here and it wicked all the way down past the median line. We had our next candle have the body inside of the Gaussian channel, but the top of our body closed outside, so not technically as resistance. The following candle didn't close as resistance either, and then we're in this candle right now. So what you can see happening before our eyes is that we've dipped our toe into quicksand, but not officially yet. We have not seen an actual body closes resistance. Let me give you an example. If you go to the prior times where we entered quicksand, it became official here on this candle. We had dipped our toe, dipped our toe, dipped our toe, dipped our toe, official. That's when it became official. And when you look at the prior ones here, we dipped our toe, dipped our toe, dipped our toe, official. Official right here. Now, you can see it become official and then a bounce. But what you notice is that it never takes out the prior high, it creates a lower high and said it's a failed rally. And a failed rally always rolls over and takes out the prior pivot low and goes even lower. And then we had another failed rally, which again, usually goes lower and takes out the prior pivot low, which it did. And then the only time we actually started to become bullish is when we took out these prior pivot highs with this one. This told us a new trend had started and then that happened right? It, it's all based on the facts. You can look at any of the facts in the charts, right? It became official. We dipped our toe, dipped our toe, dipped our toe, official right here. After we became official, we did have a nice rally, but we rallied at, into resistance, right? So that's why you want to look at the structure of what we got now and the facts of what we got now. We also said a while back, and we pointed it out right here back in early July, that we had come down to the top of the Gaussian channel. In that video, we said, watch for a bounce. Why? Because we've done that every single time we came into the, the Gaussian channel here, huge bounce. We came into the Gaussian channel here, huge bounce. We came into the Gaussian channel here, huge bounce. We came into the Gaussian channel here, huge bounce. Every time we first drop down into the Gaussian channel, we see a bounce. Even prior ones, even if you look at the prior one here, we dropped down, but not quite to the Gaussian channel, there was a huge bounce. And then into the Gaussian channel, then a huge bounce. But what you notice about these huge bounces is it doesn't take out the previous high. In other words, if Bitcoin were to see a bounce from here, it would have to take out this previous high here, which is at about 70. It has to take that out. If it does, that's a bullish case. And that's something that we could eventually avoid this quicksand altogether. Because as we speak right now, we have not had any body close inside of the Gaussian channel. There's still a small chance. But let me tell you the facts. Bitcoin has never dipped its toe like this inside of the Gaussian channel and then got out of it in the clear. It's never happened. When you look at it, I just pointed out the five times that we had been here, but you always see bounces from there, but they're failed bounces, right? So could we say it could never happen? Of course not. Bitcoin is capable of anything, and Bitcoin usually does the opposite of what everyone thinks. So those things are always true. But what I'm wanting to stress to you is just pure, bona fide, cold, hard facts. And that's what we covered here. One of the things I find fascinating, we want to understand when is this going to change from green to red? Because as you can see, that's one of the definitive turning points in the chart. What I found is that on the two-day chart, we just flashed red. I'm thinking to make a bonus video on this. Let me know in the comments if you want to see 
this bonus video. Earlier in the show, I mentioned I have a big announcement. Let's get to it. So Grandma Betty has become a theme in our videos, something that we're really watching out for. If you're new, Grandma Betty is the leader of the herd. So we always try to understand what she is doing and then do the opposite. She got so popular that a lot of comments in every video I made was like, Steve, please make a Grandma Betty coin. We want to invest. And these comments started going like wildfire. There started to be a lot of them and everybody was interacting and liking and commenting on other comments and it became like a big thing. And it made me question like, maybe I should create this thing. So I wanted to give you an announcement and that's, I'm not going to create this coin and here's why there's really two reasons but when i considered it i considered it from the standpoint of like oh my god i didn't know my community would want this maybe i should deliver it to them but then i thought hold on a second i don't think this will really help change lives and everything i create i try to actually help people make more money make better decisions and set their family up for the future right i have courses that change people's lives i have indicator bundles that change people's life i have the FFA that changed people's life. It actually helps people. I am focused only on this in my life. And I thought there's no way that this meme coin can actually help people. I think it would definitely help my pockets, but I don't think it would really help your pockets. And I'm not interested in things that just help my pockets and not your pockets. Otherwise, I would take paid ads. Eight years ago, when they started offering millions of dollars to take paid ads, and I said no, and I've said no since then. I've also not done any ICOs. When ICOs were hot in 2018, 2017, I didn't do that because it wouldn't help my audience, I didn't think. And the NFT craze, I didn't do an NFT craze because again, I didn't believe that would add value and better the lives of my community. It would pad my pockets, absolutely. But I said, no, I'm not interested in padding my pockets and hurting my community. I know that that's pretty strange because I don't know anybody that's turned down ads for eight years, didn't do an ICO, didn't do an NFT, and said no to all of these money grabs. I don't know anybody that's done that, but I also don't care. I'm in my own lane. And the second reason I'm not going to do this coin is because I don't know how to start a coin and I don't really care to learn. And I, I probably should lie to you and say, well, I'm a crypto expert, so I know everything with crypto. I don't care about most of it. I care about the charts and I care about Bitcoin and I care about a couple other coins and the rest of it can be thrown in the trash as far as I'm concerned. In life, you want to be not good at a bunch of stuff. You want to be incredibly fascinatingly good at one thing and one thing only. And if you can be potentially best in the world at that one thing, you should use it to help as many people as you can. And that's it. I focus on Bitcoin and I would consider myself as one of the best in the world at Bitcoin charts. I would put my track record up against anybody. And that's just my belief in myself. It's not me saying I'm better than anybody. I just believe in myself. I honestly, I don't know what anybody else is doing in the crypto space. And I really don't care. I'm just in my own lane doing my own thing. And most important to me is like, I want to help the average Joe. I want to help the people that have been counted out their whole lives. I want to help the people that have been beaten down and told they couldn't do it. For me, I grew up in a wealthy town. I grew up in a, a very wealthy town, but I grew up on the poorest street, by far the poorest street in the wealthy town. How do you think the wealthy people treated me growing up? What do you think? Not very good. When you grow up in a wealthy town and you are clearly on the poorest street where the wealthy people will never come on that street because usually the police are on that street trying to clean up all the messes. That's where I grew up. Now imagine this. I grew up to teenage parents. Now, how do you think they treated me? In a wealthy town with teenage parents on the poorest street? Yeah, it was not very pretty. Everybody counted me out. They all said I couldn't do it. They all said I wouldn't amount to much, but I knew I was going to be successful. They just didn't believe me. I knew it. And if you study successful people, they all knew it when they were kids. So I said, when I become successful, I'm going to help the people where I came from. Now, if you guys know, I've traveled all over the world. I've been very lucky. I've been very blessed. And everywhere we go, me and my family go to the poor communities and we give back huge. 
We usually leave people in tears because nobody pays attention to the poor community. Nobody cares about them. So on this channel, I don't care if you grew up poor or rich. I, I don't care. I care that you want to come into crypto and you're looking to not get rich quick, but you're looking to really push your family forward. You're looking for that. Hey, I don't want to work that nine to five. I don't want to. I, I want this better life. I'm not sure how to get there. That's what I do. I'm your guy. I'm not taking the easy money from the ICOs and the NFTs and the Grandma Betty meme coins and all the paid ads. I'm turning it all down. I know that it's just not normal to do that, but I'm on my own path. I couldn't care less about patting my pockets. I am here to really make a difference. So I know a lot of people wanted me to make this meme coin, this Grandma Betty coin, but it's just not, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm going to disappoint folks. I know they're going to say, oh, it's easy. You can do this and that. Even if it was easy, even if it was seamless, it still doesn't align with my vision of what I'm trying to do. So I hope you understand. I know I'm going to leave some folks disappointed, but this is as real as it gets. So hit that subscribe button. I'll see you right back here in the next video.